Well, hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, you know, I'm back around to arches again. Seems like I rotate through all these different papers all the time, but there's so many great cotton papers to try. But you know me. I'll always get back to arches, right? And today I am going to try out and really put, well, I've already tried them out, but I'm really going to put some of these Trickell brushes through their paces. Um, I've been meaning to sort of set aside an episode. This is not a review. This is a study, a landscape study, uh, but I did want to mention the Trickell brushes. That I'll list them below, but they don't sell these on Amazon. You can only get them at Trickell, so I'll have a link to their website. And it's primarily the Protégé and the Protégé Plus. So as I start out, uh, I'm just spraying this paper. Uh, I'll get into what I'm doing here in a minute, but I just wanted to set the stage for you. Um, Essentially, I had this idea, and a lot of my studies turn out this way or start this way. Something that I want to test or try or think through or paint through, if you will. So I'm thinking in terms of, and usually it comes from observation, uh, in this case, trees. You know, the branch structure of how trees silhouette against a light sky. But then some of those branches cross back over into the dark. And I thought, hmm. Uh, how would I treat that? Well, um, before I get there, let's look at what I'm doing here, which is just a really a spontaneous background. And it's mostly just going to be a backdrop for some trees. Big surprise. And in the center of this, I'm going to be very, very dark. Now, I've used some thalo green, a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple. Uh, the orange there you see is actually scarlet pyrrole. That's in there. Not only to add variety, but to calm down that thalo green-blue shade a little bit. So it'll come across a little more muted, and it's going to be a primarily green-purplish uh, limited palette. This is the palette I love to use. So yeah, all of this, as you can see, is happening pretty quickly. I've, I really did not spend a lot of time on this, and I just wanted an area of light sky, I guess you could say, and dark like a stand of trees. What is light without dark? So that I could frame these de detailed tree branches um, coming across from the light area to the dark area. It's as simple as that. And really, um, studies can be no more complicated than that. And some of them can turn into really good paintings. Uh, I've had a lot of studies that I go, oh, yeah, I'll frame that. So uh, doing a little wet lifting here just to establish a ground line and some contrasting foreground brush. Uh, but all of this, uh, most of which I've shown you in real time, has just gone very fast. So now the background is dry and we start to, to craft our branches. I love uh, doing a lot of this this time of year because I know pretty soon we're going to have uh, trees leafing out and I'll no longer be able to study those branch structures in the bare trees. So I'm always inspired this time of year to paint a lot of branches or a lot of bare branch trees. But I see this effect all the time. And I wonder to myself, or I think to myself, now how am I going to handle that? Will I handle it with masking fluid? Well, you could. Uh, you'd have to do some very fine masking. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. I know it's probably not making sense what I'm saying right now. But uh, some, it would be some very planned out branches and very fine lines. Both of those are challenging with masking fluid. I rather wanted this to stay very spontaneous. So that means the light colored branches as they come over the dark background are going to have to be an opaque paint. For me, in this situation, that means gouache. But we're not quite there yet. So, um, putting in these trees, thought I would add a little piece of a deadfall down below. And this whole composition and painting is uh, kind of think of it like a bouquet of trees. <laughs> the way you would do flower arrangements. And I've said this in other videos. You can do sort of a bouquet of trees putting in some distant, fainter background tree trunks just to establish the feel, the impression. There's some dense forest back there. But we got breaks in the sky to the right and to the left. 
where this tree structure, these branch structure, will be very visible. And before we get to finishing the branches, I'm just enhancing that contrast in that foreground brush a little bit. All right, so on to the fine branches. Putting most of them in with the Protege Plus uh, Zero round, and a few of them in with the number six round. I think the six is what I'm using right now. I've said this before, but to me, putting in branch structures is an exercise in design. I don't like to have evenly fanned out branches. You don't want them all going out to the side. You need to make them look like they're coming forwards and backwards and a bit of a bramble, but you want open areas. You know, you want to make them look natural and I also want them to fit in the composition in an interesting way. So it kind of becomes a uh, task of subdividing space. Uh, even abstractly, I would say. But this is pretty much straightforward. Brushes are doing great. But you'll see that big, dark, ink blotty area in the middle. <laughs> That'll make sense very shortly. And it will play into the study situation I was trying to set up for myself. And here we go. Brought out the Holbein gouache. Now gouache is, is great for a couple of reasons for this. Number one, uh, I can color it. So I don't want stark white here. Otherwise I could just get out a gel pen or a fountain pen and some white ink. I want, um, and you can see there, I tried to get my palette in there. I'm doing a pale grade lavender, which is a lighter version of what the trees actually were. And if you look, you go out and study trees where you see them silhouetted against the sky, and then you see branches coming in front of a dark background. They seem to change value because the relative value of the highlights, the light hitting the top of them, is still lighter than that background. You wouldn't think, you would think, oh, well, uh, you know, here's the trees, lights hitting them, they're all going to be the same value, so no matter what the background's like, i got to paint them all the same. No, uh, and maybe it's a trick of the eye and the light that you're seeing, um, but it they do appear to be lighter, or if there are any highlights on the branches, you will see them brighter than the background, if the background's very dark. That's the effect that I wanted to study. That's the effect that I wanted to portray. And I just thought it'd make a pretty cool look. Getting that value is right. Um, I, again, I didn't want these to be stark, stark white. That just would not have looked right. It would have looked like branches with snow on them. So they need to be just enough to see but also just enough to look like they're catching the light in front of that dark. And then, you know, it's just a matter of detailing till I'm satisfied. But I like this a lot. I liked it, doing this a lot. And we just get to the, the point here that you can study any little thing that hits your brain. Make up a scenario in which you can study that. Thanks, everybody. This was a short one, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support and sponsorship of this channel. See everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.